tonight I'm gonna tell you how my big titties saved my life. <laughs> so it was the summer of 1988. I'm, si <laughs> I'm 16 years old. I got two kids, two and one years old, and I'm living in the hood in Atlanta. And in this hood, I'm, you know, I'm trying to survive. So I go out and start me a small business. Well, I was selling crack, but we gonna call it a small business tonight. <laughs> Okay, white people. <laughs> Cause when you're 16 years old in the hood and you got two kids, there's only two things you can do for a job. Either sell drugs or sell your body. So I did the one that paid the most. <laughs> so I had to advertise this business and I couldn't go out, you know, and try to get no fucking commercial, no flashy signs or no shit like that. So I had to advertise the way we do in the hood. I went out and bought me a 1980 Fleetwood Cadillac from the junkyard for $500. And I put 9,500 into it, rims and paint. So I take this car and I paint it pearl white with 1,001 gold flakes in it. And white people, you probably don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but when you got a paint job with 1,001 gold flakes, you the shit in the hood. <laughs> so I'm sitting in my car one day with one of my clients running inventory through my small business. I always had to keep a client in the car with me because I was 16 years old with a learner's permit and I didn't want to risk the chance of losing my fucking permit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there one day and one of my rivals walk up and he hit the back of my car and he just yelled, rabbit, get the hell out of the car with your fat ass. Now rabbit is my hood name because you can't go by your real name in the hood. Patricia don't sound tough at all. <laughs> I get out the car and we argue and he fucking spit on my car. Now it wasn't a regular spit, people, cause I wouldn't have got mad. It was a type of spit that he pulled from his damn navel. <laughs> the first thing I'm thinking like, this fucker done fucking chipped one of my gold flakes. <laughs> I paid a lot of money for that paint job. So I go to my car cause I gotta be tough and I'm a girl. I reach in the car and grab my baby bag and I move the pampers over. Then I move the crack over. Then I get my pistol. <laughs> Cause you know I'm a good mama. You gotta keep all the shit together. <laughs> and so I take my gun and I stick it to his dick. And I said, now get that shit off of my car before I turn your dick into a blooming onion. He wiped the spit off, and I said, now get the hell out of here. He walks away. He get halfway up the hill, and he turn around, and he was like, when I come back, bitch, I'm gonna kill you. Now, I'm from the hood. You hear that shit every day. You don't believe it till they lay you down. <laughs> <laughs> white, white people, don't let this white guilt get you, okay? Relax, this shit is funny. <laughs> hey, five minutes later, I'm serving customers, and he come back, and there, he's shooting. Now, I don't know if you ever been in a shootout with black people before, but when they come down the hill and they running and they shoot, I think they'll make the bullets go faster. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to shoot back because I got my pistol in my hand. But what I realized, my pistol wouldn't shoot because the shit was on safety. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a shootout before, but if you're ever in a shootout and you shooting your shit on safety, you're not in a shootout any longer. <laughs> you being shot at. <laughs> So I take off running, and I'm running down the hill, and my fucking titties just flying in my face. And I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to hold my titties down, because you know these titties young, they took off running before I did. <laughs> I run down the hill, and I jumped over this fence, and I run into my girlfriend's house. She was like, why you got blood all over your shirt? And I looked down, and I'm like, damn, I don't snag my fucking nipple on the fence. <laughs> She called 911, y'all, and the, the EMT pull up a little white guy. And he was like, ma'am, what happened? I'm like, I think I snagged my fucking nip on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> so the EMT guy tried to take my bra off, and you know, I got a big set of titties. I've had these same titties since the third grade. <laughs> so he's back there trying to take my bra off, and he's struggling like hell. I was like, oh, evidently you never dealt with real titties. Let me give you a hand, EMT. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to bend my back in where my back titties would help him unbutton my bra. <laughs> so he take my bra loose and then my right titty just fall out like it was in a drive-by. <laughs> so he picked it up and he's like, I think you've been shot. I was like, 
you think I've been shot? So he lifts my arm up. He's like, you got an entrance, and it came out through your nipple. That's your exit. So I'm thinking, like, this fucker blew my nipple off? <laughs> like a bullseye? <laughs> so he's like, I need to get you to the hospital. So I get to the hospital, y'all, and the doctor examined my titty. He was like, ma'am, he blew your nip off. I'm like, I fucking heard. <laughs> he was like, well, ma'am, you really lucky, because if you was an A cup, you would have died. <laughs> Them little titties would have got you killed, baby. <laughs> <laughs> These real titties, they save life. <laughs> Thank y'all so much, I'm Miss Pat. <laughs> <laughs>